Okay, viewers, we're in for a treat. I've just come into the Legacy Raven Audio Room, and here we are, Bill Duddleson from Legacy Audio, Hello. Dave Thompson from Raven Audio. How are you guys? Great, great. Very well. Great to be back at the show. I was listening to the system that's behind you just a minute ago. It was something spectacular, just wonderful. Can you guys talk us through? Um, Bill, what speakers do we have here? Sure. You know, we're playing the Caliber system, which is a... Uh, uh, Kind of a, a full range speaker. And when I say full range, it's from about 40 hertz on up. It's just right there. It's high efficiency. Um, this one is uh, the XD version, which simply means it has an internal power amplification capability. So you can either run it bi amped, you can run it full range, at, or bi amp how we've been running it here at the show. And then I also have the uh, the air system, um, which is kind of the, a bigger brother to it. Um, and uh, which we've uh, been had out for a while, and it's really earned its place in the market as a yeah, full range hybrid. Yeah, a great, great speaker. And Dave, how about the amplifiers? Well, this is the largest one here is our flagship monoblock, 325 watts per channel. It's called the Shaman Mark II. Mm -hmm. uh, it uses uh, an octet of 6550 or KT88, KT100, KT120, KT150, all that line of power tubes. And we always put uh, old 40s and 50s NOS signal tubes in the driver stage mm -hmm. and the cathode stage. Mm -hmm. And it's auto fully auto-biased. Beautiful looking. You see these big caps here. Yeah, I do. So yeah, that's big, gorgeous. As, big as a Coke can. <laughs> and then we're using these to power the Aris. But the Aris is a very, very efficient speaker. But mm -hmm. even in all its efficiency in the upper 90s, uh, it handles 322 watts very well, which Perfect. is like 14 or 1500 solid state watts. Mm -hmm. Because two watts, you know, once they grab a hold of the driver, they don't let go. Solid state is a series of pushes and pushes and pushes. So that's the difference. Well it's a less efficient way well to put. amplify. Uh, but this one, once it grips the driver in the speaker cabinet, it's all over for that driver. It does exactly what the amp wants it to. Okay. And we're using the, our also our flagship preamplifier, which has a built-in phono stage. 47k, so it's good for uh, high output cartridges. And then this is the line stage here, and uh, it's yeah, tube rectified, mode. tube regulated. This is an OA3 regulator from the 40s, um, and this is the rectification here. It's 5Y3, 6B4G. Mm -hmm. um, this is an old 6SN7. Most audio people are familiar with that too. Yep, sure am. And uh, and then so for the caliber. We're using uh, this 50 watt per channel shadow stereo amplifier. And for the preamplifier, we're using the Wavelet, which is uh, the legacy audio product that uh, has room correction. It's also a preamplifier, a great preamplifier, a world class preamplifier. The DAC in it is fabulous. Mm -hmm. So uh, it also works as an outboard crossover uh, for the legacy speakers. Uh, but the room correction is what really. Uh, it, we're almost cheating here with <laughs> well that. Put. It's, uh, it's such great technology, and Bill will tell you about it later. Okay. So. Well, good. Let's move on over here to your cast of or portfolio of amplifiers. This is a new cast of characters here. The Avian series is brand new for 2019. Uh, we've redone the Nighthawk, Blackhawk, and Osprey, which uh, are all PC board uh, based. The new, the new version of these amps, uh, the PC board is a lot thicker now, and it's redundantly traced, the mirror image traced on the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. So it actually has two of the same circuits traced on it. Uh, so it it's just gives it a lot more fat and punchy sound, uh, but it hasn't lost any of its clean, cleanliness and delineation. So it's just a really great sounding amp now. The great thing about the Nighthawk and Blackhawk and Osprey now is the new addition of this is powder coat instead of paint, automotive paint now. So it's almost impervious to scratches and stuff. So all the dusting that people do, that's what the, uh, yeah. it won't put those light swirls anymore. That's a problem with lacquer coating. Yeah. Yep. So also we have white. Uh, new for 2019 is the high pass filter going to the sub. So that completely releases the amplifier from doing anything uh, in the subcategory. So we have a, a 80 and a 100 watt filter in here and mm -hmm. then we, you can put it on bypass uh, if you have a full range speaker. So it's just a great addition. So it makes the amp act like it's about four times more powerful. So and all of our integrates will have that 
for 2019. Well, congratulations. That's great. Thanks. Okay, and Bill, what do we have here? This is uh, kind of an unusual setup we have here. We wanted to debut a new product design. Uh, this is called the Wave Bar. And what it is, it's actually the, the equivalent of a pair of serial speakers. Uh, the, the reason why uh, it's made as a single bar like that, first of all, you can mount it on a wall, use it as a center channel, put on a credenza, have a great sounding stereo system. But at the same time, it's really equivalent to a good sounding pair of stereo speakers. Um, the, my experience, I have been developing sound bars for years for uh, various people, and I can tell you that I totally dislike building them. Um, it's, a, it's a cluster that have five, three channels and five feet. And all they do is, is interfere with each other. You get this strange comb filtering all the time. And uh, so I thought, you know, let's, let's approach this in a better way. Uh, the reaction at the show has been just phenomenal, almost surprisingly so. I thought it would be a tough sell, but people are getting it right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it, uh, it has two separate channels. Now this unit is internally powered with 500 watts per side. And uh, uh, there will be a version of it also that's being developed right now that will also have DSP capability and allow SPDIF in. So That's great. Uh, and the silhouette speakers that you see uh, flanking them on each side, they've been out for a couple of years, but they are, they are the on-wall uh, installer's choice. Uh, there's, I'm aware of no on-wall that does what these do in the size of space they have. There's mm -hmm. some, some good speakers out there, but these are really unique. You can see how thin they are, viewers. There you go. Okay, perfect. And here's the big boy over here. Let's uh, have Dave talk about the amps, please. Okay. We, we have two different types of monoblock here. Uh, one of them is the old 300B uh, triode powered. Uh, this particular monoblock is Class AB uh, ultra linear, and it's a push pull design with the 300B triode. Uh, it's tube regulated, tube rectified. Um, it's fully auto biased also. We use the cathode bias system, the cathode from this tube right here, which is the 12SN7. The first and second stage is a 12J5, which is an old World War II era design. It's a single triode. Um, it's 26 watts per channel. This is the KT88 6550, that category version of uh, the same chassis, but it, it is with 6550s in it, it gives you 125 watts per channel. Um, the circuitry on it is based on roughly, loosely, on the old Brook 10C from the early 50s. Really? Yeah, and then it's our, our, our slant on it. Um, they're hand wired, point to point. Uh, they have a great power supply. We run the tubes really lightly, so they'll last uh, two to three times as long as normal. Mm -hmm. um, it has a, a new V unimeter uh, style on it uh, instead of the old eyebrow one that we had for years. Um, it, it's just a, both of these amps are a great match for all of the legacy speakers, but especially this one here, the V. Well, this is a special uh, speaker build. It is. <clears throat> this is the second year we've seen the speaker, and it's, uh, it was startling how good it sounds. Yeah, it's a, a very unusual speaker in that, first of all, you notice there are 14 inch mid range drivers in it. But these mid-range drivers are very fast and, and clean. And if you listen to the column, you can hear how frequency, high frequency oriented they are as opposed to a woofer, for oh, example. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is uh, some people wonder, why do you want so much piston area in the mid-range? And anybody who's ever had a, a good panel speaker understands why you like to do that. And that is, a, a tweeter may have a wavelength of, a, of a, a, you know, reproduce wavelengths on the order of an inch or so. And the mid-ranges might reproduce wavelengths out on the order of one to three feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. But when you get down in the lower mid-range, where you're talking about wavelengths that are five, six feet long before you get into the real base territory, it's super nice to have that kind of piston area for stopping and starting. And these drivers are indeed open air. Um, uh, the, the, uh, that's the, probably the most unusual part of the system is that the fact that these drivers are truly dipole mm -hmm. and we have a very controlled directivity pattern. So because of that, we have very long throw. You can throw sound right out that door. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, and it sounds pretty much like it does in the, in the front room. So, and, uh, the woofer section on it is, is, uh, uh, dual, uh, specialized woofers, but this is in a sealed mid-base 
capacity and that one is in a subwoofer capacity. On the rear there are uh, passive radiators that you can see. And, uh, and there's, uh, the speaker is quad amplified and you can get as many channels as you want internal or you can leave, uh, leave it to drive ex to totally externally if you like. So in this particular case we're using a couple tube amplifiers for the top end of the speaker and it works out great. Well, great. Let's move over to the other part of the room. Here we go. Okay. What do we have over here, Dave? This is one of my favorite amps. This is our entry level amp, but by no ways, no means is it weak. It's a wonderful sounding Nighthawk. This is the Mark III version. This is the 2019 version of this amp. So it's the third version that we've had. We've gone uh, from our introductory uh, design all the way up to the new design which has the uh, the filter on the back as we showed you earlier. Uh, it still has the handles. Everybody loves these. It weighs about 37 pounds. Uh, it, uh, the, the transformers in it are made here in the United States. They're made in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, they're proprietary. They're mm -hmm. designed just for us. Mm -hmm. uh, along with the uh, uh, it has WIMA capacitors. Um, this is the only uh, integrated amp in our line that doesn't have all the high-end um, brew through parts, the real uh, audiophile level parts, but mm -hmm. this amp sounds incredible. I love the, it's, it's so musical. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it helps to have speakers like this at a show to drive. It, it sure does. <laughs> and Bill, what speakers do we have here? speakers in the world yeah. here. So. Yeah, the, the, uh, this is the Studio HD and the Signature SE. And these are speakers that have been refined over a period of years, um, more than 10 years on each model. And what I, I can say about this is uh, people have read about the Focus and they, it, it has a reputation of its own, but I think the, the jaws drop the most when they hear how good these smaller speakers sound. I think mm -hmm. the expectation is a lot different. Um, when you look at the uh, individual drivers on the, the speaker, basically the woofer system on this is two 10-inch aluminum cones and they're, they're long throw drivers, but they also operate up into the lower mid-range, uh, which gives the speaker very full quality. And uh, you'll notice that we're both using, both of the systems are using the silver graphite cones that you see through a lot of our speakers. And also in both cases, you'll see the AMT drivers, that this is a specialized mm -hmm. four inch. And then you have the one inch on, on both of the speakers. Oh, great, well, very good. Let's move over to the other part. Here we go. Okay, and on this system over here, what amps do we have here, Dave? These are the Shamans again. They're just in a different color. Uh, 325 watts channel, point to point, hand wired. Class AB ultra linear. Mm -hmm. um, just the black version of the same amplifier. Yeah, stately looking is a yeah. good word for it. Yeah, it makes it, it makes it look like a different amp. It's just more, I don't know how to describe it, but black is you know pretty sexy. I so, know it's like especially it's, when you do gold accents. Yeah, I do. <laughs> So this is also the same preamplifier, the Silhouette Reference preamplifier with the uh, phono stage and line stage. Simple but incredibly clean. And well, that's a, that's that's what makes this sound magic is the simple circuits. Yep. Sometimes and often do sound the best. And Bill, we have the Focus SEs here. Yeah, you're looking at the the latest version of the, the Focus SE loudspeaker, and. Um, you know, this is a speaker that I can't tell you how deeply it's penetrated in the professional market. And it's in a lot of studio settings, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, mixing areas, and, and uh, it's just been kind of a mainstay. And I have to say, even in our own product line as I develop speakers, it's kind of the speaker I co keep going back to mm -hmm. uh, to check the truth <laughs> uh, on the design that I'm working on. And if it sounds tonally off or different from this, I know I'm going in the wrong direction. I'll take more speed, I'll take better transit characteristics, uh, more bass weight or even more dynamics. But if the tonal character is off from this, then there's something that's not right in that system. So it's a great reference point for us. Well, since you've uh, wetted the whistle with it being your reference loudspeaker, should we use this loudspeaker for our music test today? Sure. Let's do that. All right. Okay, here we go.
de pan C'est la nuit pâle d'une lumière encore Ce sont les étoiles un jour qui s'endorment So musically convincing, I can understand why you have the speaker as your reference. Uh, we we brought this round to many rooms today, and it never sounded better than this. And it's just a clear, clean, tight bass, Thank you. beautiful uh, ambiance around the staging of the original recording and uh, or the pop mix. And uh, you, you know, it doesn't get any better than this. And it's you know, you're not talking. Uh, half a million dollars for this right. audio system, and that's the beauty of it. That's why we room with Raven. Oh. <laughs> but this has been my dream speaker forever. And when I finally got my first pair, I was on cloud nine, actually cloud ten. But um, yeah, and then this look at this. Mine's Isn't the finish beautiful? Quite, yeah, mine's not quite that pretty, but. <laughs> Well, again, thank you very much, guys, uh, for your hospitality today at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and we wish you uh, the best until we see you next time. Very good. Thank you, Peter. Okay, very good. Thank you, too. Yep. Bye-bye.